Hi everybody, this is Catholic Dad, episode number 327, Perfect Yourself. <clears throat> I've been thinking about um, human beings and uh, like, you know, a lot of times we look at our political enemies or, you know, the people on the other side of the crowd and we say, we, we assume that they're malintended and that they're evil and, you know, um, I don't think that's the case. I think probably 99% of people are well-intended, maybe even 99.9% .9 of people. I think all people think they're probably doing good, just everybody reaches the wrong conclusion and... Um, not everybody, but a lot of people reach the wrong conclusion. And I was actually thinking about um, like perfection in society. Everybody's going for their own utopia. And how do you perfect society? Uh, well, there's two ways to do it. And I think there's one that is a good way and there's one that's a bad way. And I would say probably the good way is, um, um, is perfecting yourself and yourself alone and then using yourself as an instrument by going into the world and making the world a better place by doing something great, by picking up responsibility. Now, this is the religious message for the most part. This is the religious people have figured this out, and this is the whole uh, uh, sorrowful mystery story uh, with regard to the Holy Rosary. You have the agony in the garden, meaning you have to go into the garden, you actually have to pray, and you have to pray and think about all your faults and all, you know, all your iniquities, and uh, analyze yourself and tear yourself apart, because the war that you, that you have, you, the war from that you have is within, it's within your own heart, trying to like fight the demons and Satan within your own heart and trying to make yourself better. And then as you get up and get out of the garden, if you figure this out, you start bringing the message to the world, you're gonna be beaten and it's the scourging at the pillar. And then you're gonna to have to pick up responsibility and heavy responsibility and this is the cross and this cross is gonna to lead to great suffering. You're gonna carry this cross, or I'm sorry, I missed the crowning with thorns. You're gonna have the thorns placed on your head where people, um, make fun of you and tease you and like uh, um, like take you down verbally. And then you're going to pick up your cross. The cross is great suffering. It's great responsibility and it will give you meaning and you pick that responsibility up and you carry it up the hill. That's the uh, carrying the cavalry and by the time you get to the top of cavalry all that responsibility and all that perfecting of yourself you did uh, you, you one day will be greatly persecuted for it and that's um, that's the crucifixion. And so uh, when people, um, the religious people have figured this out, particularly the Christianity, that uh, to perfect society, you have to start with yourself and that the individual is paramount in, in terms of making the world a better place. Because the individual, by the way, if you think about free will, uh, who do you have power over? Nobody but yourself. You're the only person you can actually overcome free will with. Like you can ask other people around you to overcome their like inequities, but are they going to do it? Well, maybe not. Uh, and you can't possibly do that for them. And therefore, that's why uh, to dominate other people and control other people is almost always a failure. Then we have another way of like perfecting society. And I guess this is the anti-religious. And I think this is the secular world or the atheistic world or the communistic world that... Um, uh, societies think that you don't necessarily have to perfect yourself, but you have to perfect the system in which the people are part of. And this is government for the most part. And uh, this always leads to the great centralization of power, the, uh, the autocracy, the authoritarianism. And it always leads to uh, gr group warfare, you know, um, class warfare. It's uh, the, the patriarchy crowds, the feminists, it's the social justice warriors, it's the, uh, this is Bolshevism and it's, uh, it's at its maximum. That uh, there are certain classes in society that are oppressed by other certain classes and that the world is a constant revolution and constant struggle and that these uh, oppressed people, it's their, uh, their courage to carry as a group, right? You're not identified as an individual, but you're identified as a group and then you have to pick that collective cross up on your own so to say, and you have to go do battle with the people that are oppressing you. And that leads to constant warfareism in society. It leads to jealousy. It leads to division. It leads to anger. It leads to, it leads to uh, oppression. It leads to, and then you create these, these laws, these laws that oppress everybody and make everybody constantly miserable. And so um, I guess that's something to think about. You have two ways to perfect society. And so I'll give you an example here, by the way. There was the great... Uh, the great atheist communist named Alexander Solzhenitsyn, uh, he wrote the Gulag Archipelago. I actually have a copy over here. Uh, I'll leave it down there. But uh, he, he started out as an atheist, and he, um, and he, he thought the, the great communistic way was the way to be until he, sl he criticized Stalin's reign of terror on his people in a private letter to one of his friends, and he got taken away, he got arrested, and he got put in a gulag for eight years where he got cancer and almost died. 
And he spent eight years in the desert. You know, this is the agony in the garden. And he, he thought about everything that happened in the world and he figured it out that how did, how did our society come to this? How, how did we degrade to this? And Alexander Solzhenitsyn realized that the problem with society was not society itself, but the problem with society was himself, that he consented to it, that he didn't perfect himself and he didn't actually go into the world and actually bring himself into the world to make the world a better place. And that, that he's the only person that he needed to perfect. And so um, that's the religious side of things. So if you're, if you're a communist, if you're an atheist, you're going to try to oppress and dominate and tyrannize other people so you can get your perfect uh, governmental system. That never works. But if you're a truly a religious people, a religious person, Roman Catholic to boot, uh, you're going to try to perfect yourself. And that's how our church is set up, by the way. Our church is set up with the, um, you know, you, you know, the Lord gives his life to, to take away your sins and, and perfect you, but you have, to, you have to attain that. And so you have to do a lot of introspection. You have to, to partake uh, in the sacrament of confession. Then only then can you go to the Eucharist when you're in, you're in a state of grace. And then you try to orient your life toward the common good, uh, toward the good of perfecting yourself within. And that's how you become a, a humble, good Christian is by perfecting the virtue in yourself, and then you're supposed to go into the world and become a missionary for the Lord. That is the perfect, how you perfect the world. And so uh, just something to think about. It. Like The world it too easily tends to creating laws to force people to work uh, in better ways, and that only leads to tyranny and oppression, and it never works. It never works when you dominate other people. But what does work is when a society becomes more religious and more moral, and they, the people, the individuals within society go into their own hearts to change their own hearts and become better people. And that's, that's the way of the cross. It really is. It's the suffering. It's the suffering. And a lot of people, by the way, a lot of people think suffering is not worth it, right? Um, and um, I would say baloney. The suffering is what, people, what gives you meaning in your life. You know, you don't suffer for the sake of being hurt and like uh, being miserable. You suffer for the sake of doing good because it's your duty. And... Um, you know, what do you talk about? What do you talk about uh, when you sit down with a bunch of men? You talk about hard things that you did, how hard a battle was, or how hard a hunting trip was, or how cold it was one night, and how you persevered, and how you did difficult things, and how you overcame, because it gives you meaning uh, in your life. And uh, that's what you need to do in terms of uh, overcoming your own um, iniquities. You have, to, you have to really, truly suffer the war within your own heart to overcome them. Um, and uh, I guess just a, a note to the, uh, the, the religious out there, the nuns, the priests, and everything else, is um, you guys have the same problem or the same, the same war raging within your own heart. Is, um, you want to perfect yourself for sure, but once you perfect yourself, you want to go into the world and become a be beacon of light for the hope of the future. And there's, a, all, there's this tendency among, um, uh, among the clergy, they want to go to the perfect church. They want to go to the comfortable church, the holy church. You know, the, uh, you know this, this church has it down. Oh, they're saying everything perfect. They're doing the Latin. Oh, oh that's where I want to be because I could do God's work there. No, that's the comfortable place. I mean, how many souls are you going to save in a traditional Latin mass church? They're all living the sacramental life for the most part, right? Uh, I mean, they are. Uh, where do you want to go? We need you. We need you to go out to the masses and like go save their hearts and their souls. And that's your cross, by the way. If you, if you want to be your, you're the comfortable guy and go hide in uh, like a community that's already holy... Well, then what are you going to do for the world? I mean, are you really going to talk about how hard it was to, like, uh, say, uh, like 100 confessions on a Saturday? You know, hear 100 confessions on a Saturday? No, that's the easy part. The hard part is getting 100 people to confession on Saturday. So you need to go where the unholy people are, priests. You really do. Uh, or the people that need catechesis, the people that need your love, the people that need your guidance. But first, first wage the war within, deep in your hearts. And then, um, and then bring it to the world and bring it to the world where the people are at and where they need to be met. This is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like or subscribe, get the Mass, and pray the Daily Rosary. God bless you all.